Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? I'm going to open up my little chat box. And this is normally the way we start things in our transformation support community webinars. I open the little chat box and feel free to say hello to me. <clears throat> tell me where you're from. Tell me what's going on today. People are all popping in, so that's cool. Hello, Tanya. Tanya is one of our existing transformation support community members. So I told our existing guys, I said, look, if you want to get a bit of a feel for what we've got coming up in this next little, uh, little topic that we're covering in the community, just jump into this webinar. So Tanya knows how to like say hello. And it's a nice little, like a nice warm little community. And guys, what I'm going to do in a sec is I'm going to share my screen and I've got like a slideshow for you, but I will always keep uh, an eye on the chat box. Hello, Nicole from Athens. That's pretty cool. We're international. I like it. We had um, one of our American transformation support community members uh, decide that because uh, probably about 60% of the people don't watch the webinars live when, when we're in the program. Um, but but she decided she's going to get up and it was like 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning just to watch one and be with us. So I have no idea what time it is over there, uh, Nicole. Hello, Tanya. What? Tanya from Athens, Greece. Um, look, we've got to have it like a Greek contingent in the, uh, in the program. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... And guys, when we do this we're in the program too, just feel free to share your screen if you'd like for me to be able to see you, or, or it can just be like a little fly on the wall, whatever works for you. Andrea from Germany. We've got, a, we've got, we've got one Aussie that we know of. <laughs> Margaret from the UK. This is super duper cool. All right. It's like, you know, coronavirus has got us hamstrung, so at least we can like travel in, uh, in digital land. All right, I'm going to share my screen and get into it. Um, but I will keep a little eye on the chat box um, so we can, um, we can keep chatting. So you guys now should be able to just share, uh, see mainly my screen and maybe a little me up in the corner. Just kind of nod your head if that's the case. Yeah, cool. Perfect, perfect. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to say, uh, hello, Janelle, and she said, who said, great to see some international friends joining. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is um, welcome to everyone. And thank, thanks for your interest and thanks for being here with me. I, I'm super aware that if you want to, uh, you know, work on your eating or your physical activity or your weight or your body image, there are infinite things that you can do. Uh, and, you know, psychology and what we're going to talk about today, the non-dieting approach is a little bit different. So I'm, um, I'm thankful that you're here to check it out. As I'll show you, it gets some really cool results. So uh, it, it, it's absolutely wonderful, but it does take a bit of a, a leap of faith. So I'm glad that you're here and thinking about taking that leap. So a little bit about me um, as the person who's going to be talking to you all night tonight um, and, and, and supporting you in the program if you join. Um, I think probably you know a bit about me, but just a little background. So I'm a, a psychologist who's really into the psychology of food, physical movement, weight and body image. That's my jam. I did my, uh, my study and my research in psycho social factors and weight management. So how your mindset and how the people around you affect your, um, your ability to manage your weight. And I have published research, but I'm not really a researcher. I think my, my big benefit to you will be my clinical experience is in taking kind of what we know about the science and um, adapting that into models and techniques and strategies that work for real people. So I've spent well over 10,000 hours just talking one-on-one -on -one 
And now, um, you know, this will be our seventh year running online programs. And, and I do just a ton of work with people. I still do that and I'll do that forever. Um, so that's a big part of my value to you. I, I run a clinic called Weight Management Psychology. So there's seven psychs that all specialize in this area. And I'm lucky to do some teaching and mentoring through the Australian Psychological Society and Dietitians Australia and some other great groups. Um, also, I think that my personal therapy values are compassion. I don't think we do very well when we're, um, when we're judging ourselves. Innovation, uh, because I think that what we have done in the past doesn't necessarily work very well and evidence, because I think a lot of what we do isn't actually based on good science. Um, so I'm lucky enough to be able to, to share some compassionate and innovative and evidence-based messages in the media, on TV. I recently wrote a book last year. So I really, really love taking these ideas outside the therapy room. So I thought we would kind of start off with a little bit of a kind of where are we with weight management? So if you want to take care of your weight, what do we typically do? And what can we kind of learn from this? So let's start off with having a look at this red line. This is like a diet and an exercise program. And interestingly, if we, if we look at the science, a lot of these programs claim to be quite different. But that the research says that for pretty much for all of them, actually, people do tend to lose weight in the short term. But then shortly after, typically when they stop, when the program stops, they start to regain weight. And this is what us researchers call the, the Nike swoosh of weight loss. So maybe in, can I see in the chat box, who has experienced this type of uh, weight loss Nike swoosh? That they've had the, the lose weight and then regain it. Often people kind of experience it a few times. You do a few of them and your, your, your weight history ends up looking like the way you'd want your share chart to look. Anyone had one of these Nike swooshes? Couple of head nods. Okay, so obviously this is not what we want. So I, about 15 years ago, started looking into psychology to help improve these outcomes. So if we kind of go down to this little lime green line, what we find is if you add general psychology, so something like cognitive behavior therapy or acceptance and commitment therapy, and Sammy said, yep, I've definitely experienced the, uh, the Nike swoosh. Um, what tends to happen is that we can help people to lose a bit more weight, which is good to people like that, and then sort of more slowly regain it. So it sort of changes the shape of the Nike swoosh. But if you're like me, that's not particularly motivating. <laughs> you know, we don't want to lose a bit more weight and regain it a bit more slowly. So maybe about 12 or 13 years ago, I started to look into some other therapies like hypnotherapy and um well i don't know why that thing just appeared on my screen that was weird um who's drawing on my screen um it's and guys just want to check who can hear me because a couple of people seem to be having problems okay most people can hear me okay that's cool um yeah cool cool that's good um so i started looking into hypnotherapy and this orange line emotional freedom techniques and these hypnosis and emotional freedom techniques are the only two psychological therapies in fact the only two therapies apart from weight loss surgery that show continued weight loss after the treatment finishes so i'm interested in those techniques if we go down to this blue line at the bottom we see bariatric surgery, and that is obviously a, 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 you know, one of the most evidence-based ways to lose a lot of weight and to keep it off. But of course, the outcomes of bariatric surgery are not perfect. If we were to draw this properly, we would show that some people continue to kind of lose weight, but then a lot of people, this, this kind of fans out, actually still experience that Nike swoosh. Um, because you can see here, these are all imperfect solutions. And 
because of that, there has been this move towards health at every size or non-dieting approaches that de-emphasize weight or actually don't focus on weight at all. And this is this sort of blue line up here. And those, those approaches don't tend to show much weight loss, but they, they actually show an improvement in health, so your physical health and your psychological health without requiring weight loss. So that does tell us something interesting that your, um, your health and your happiness and your success is not necessarily dependent on being a certain number on the scales or even necessarily losing weight. So our approach that we take, and this is the approach I take with when it's one-on-one -on -one with clients or in my book or in the program is a combination approach. Um, what we're trying to do here is marry imperfect solutions uh, to the challenges that you might be experiencing in a perfect way. So to perfectly match these imperfect solutions to you in a way that works for you as a unique person. So what are the type of things that we tend to as psychologists kind of help people out with? I think sometimes people are like, why psychology? Like, why would I see a psychologist for this stuff? And I've been confused with a dietitian, a personal trainer, a life coach, all sorts of things. But for a second, I want you to have a think about these type of things that are up on the screen and, and maybe even share with me in the chat box if you're feeling brave enough. Um, have you struggled with these type of things? You know, you, you know, you might've wanted to make a change, but just not felt it. You're just not motivated. Have you ever um, doubted your ability to change? So you might want something, but deep down, you don't know whether you're going to be able to achieve it, especially if you've tried a bunch of times before. Have you struggled with your body image? So your relationship with your own body and feeling comfortable in your skin or your self-esteem? Do you struggle with emotional eating or emotional drinking or other ways that you um, use to cope that don't actually help you cope too well in the long term? Maybe your eating has some sort of like compulsive or um, you, uh, you, you feel out of control when you're, when you're eating at times. Yeah, and a couple of people said, Andrea, Janelle, yep, yeah, very much so. Um, who struggled with um, social support or sabotage? Maybe I don't have enough people that I feel are in my corner or maybe some people are actually consciously or unconsciously throwing spanners in the works. Who struggles with um, self-care? finding the time amongst all of your other priorities to actually take care of yourself and change your habits. Or maybe, yes, Andrew said, I'm an emotional eater when I feel stressed. Yep. Um, maybe you struggle with self-sabotage. You, you know, you, you, you want to change for certain reasons, but there might be reasons why you don't want to change or reasons why you actually want to stay the same that we need to unpack before you can succeed. Maybe you're struggling with or, you know, grappling with that idea of getting bariatric surgery or even a revisional bariatric surgery. And then a, a big one that we, um, we always are really mindful of is that dieting mindset where you just get overly focused on the scales and it kind of sabotages you in a whole variety of ways. So here's a question that I really like to ask. I just call this the percentage question. And if you can give me this in the chat box, just your first thoughts. I won't even read your names out here. There's no kind of wrong answers. But what I want you to do is just think about, I'm just trying to get it so I can, can you, yep, perfect. Um, I want you to think about the goals that you have right now. So what, what's important to you? And you might have a really clear idea or just a rough idea. But then I want you to ask yourself, how important is my mindset in helping me to achieve that goal? And I want you to do it as a percentage. So zero is like, it's not important at all. I just, I just got to do it, you know? And 100% is, it is like the whole thing. Or you might be somewhere in between. So Tanya says 100%. So we're starting at 100. Oh, so yeah. Um, 100, 100, 80, 100. Anyone below 80? Be honest. It's just what you think. Yeah, not 90. So it's, it's huge, right? Guys, this is another weird thing you'll see me do 
if I join, if you join the transformation support community, this is the biggest glass I have, this big wine glass, and I fill it with sparkling water and sometimes Barocca. I don't know whether it's good or makes me boring that I drink a lot more water out of this glass than anything else. So Nicole said 70, that's, that's, you know, that's the lowest we got. So from between 70 and 100. Now I'd like to ask you the question, how much in the past, how much time and effort and energy and money have you spent on working on your mindset? Put that as a percentage. Yes, ranging from so far 30% to 80%. 60%. Okay, so we're sort of varying from 30 to 80%. So we see here even, and this is actually a group that it's, by the sounds of things spends a, fit, a lot of time on their mindset in general. Um, but even then, the, the importance of mindset isn't quite reflected in the time and energy we spend into it. So if that's the case for you, that's super cool. And if you struggle with some of these things that you can kind of see on the left of the screen, that's super cool because this is all of the stuff that we work on. And Debbie said, yep, not enough, not enough. For, and that's it for a lot of people where we're sort of realizing that for a lot of people, psychology is that missing bit of the puzzle. So when we put those different types of therapies that I mentioned in the last slide with these type of challenges and try to marry these therapies with the specific challenges in a way that's right for you as a unique person, what happens? I want to present to you just some data quickly from our previous online program. So this is the program that we've run for the, the past six years. Um, we're not running this program anymore. It's turned into the new program and I'll tell you why we did that in a minute. Um, but we don't have data on the new program because it only started this year, so it's too new. Um, but I just wanted to show you the type of results that you can expect um, if you do this type of work. And I actually wanted to show you in research because research, I think as a research geek um, and as a scientist practitioner, research tells you that we know this can work for you. Not it's like Glenn's idea or a cool theory or someone else said, but we know this can work. So if I quickly take you through the results of our old program, and this is all a bunch of measures of mindset. And this is just a whole bunch of people on average, so the average results. Let's look first at this dieting mentality. So the gray boxes are kind of before the program and the orange ones are after the program. And this was a year, so these guys are with us for a year. And what we can see here is that before the program, they were actually higher than normal on that dieting mindset. But after the program, they were actually lower, which is super duper cool. Very interestingly for us, because uh, we're going to be talking about intuitive eating in a minute, is the change in intuitive eating. So people before the 12-month transformation were just a bit lower than the average person on intuitive eating. But you can see that after the program, they were really nicely in that kind of middle of the, the normal range. So if you have felt as though... Um, you're a bit of like you would want to be a normal eater and your eating's a bit abnormal, then th this type of work is really useful for you. This graph is about how hard it is for you to control your overeating. So let's just have a look at this overall um, column here. So before the TMT, people found it just a bit harder than the average person to control their overeating. And after the TMT, they found it a lot easier. So these scales here in the middle and to the right is just that scale on the left, just broken up into two components, emotional eating 
and then eating just when in social situations and when the food is present. Two different types of eating, but we found the same thing that both of those reduced. And guys, if you have any questions, you like I've gone into research land, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, just ask in the chat box. <laughs> Exercise confidence, which is something that's obviously going to be important because we're going to be talking about joyful movement in a minute. So before the TMT, people started fairly low on exercise confidence. So sort of like 35 out of 100. And they were in that just, just snuck into that range of people who sort of start and stop exercise. But after the program, they were well into that range of people who exercise regularly, which is exactly what we want. We did measure a whole range of body image measures because your body image is one way that you can think about it is it's like your relationship with your body and like any relationship is multifaceted. So we needed a whole bunch of measures, but you can see here that every measure that we measured of body image improved. So that was really cool too. When it comes to psychological well-being, we saw a bit of a reduction in the unpleasant moods, which is cool. And then over here on the right, um, and it's just a little increase in self-esteem. And a little increase in self-esteem might not seem too much, but self-esteem is one of those things that when it gets a bit better, everything in your life tends to get a little bit better. So a little bit goes a long way. And it's also quite a hard thing to change. Self-esteem doesn't tend to change unless you do something to change it. So a little result there is still really, really good. Even if you haven't asked this question yet in the chat box, I reckon some of you will be asking it in your mind. What happened to people's weight? What happened to their weight in this program? Now, this is where we've got to talk about something that's really, really important. The, the TMT, our old program, it's the same with the TSC, our new program. This, they're what we call a non-diet approach. Now, a non-diet approach is based on the research to show that when we focus on the scales too much, it tends to cause more problems than it cures, especially in the long term. So while everybody, pretty much everybody who joins our program and does work with us wants to lose weight, and you um, certainly, uh, we're not saying you won't lose weight on this approach, uh, that isn't the focus. Um, I got a really, really cool compliment yesterday from a couple of journalists from ABC's Catalyst are um, gonna do uh, like a show on non-dieting episode. And one of them had read my book and she said, Glenn, I, I found your book really refreshing because it was different to anything that I, I'd, I'd read. I, I, I wasn't feeling like I was reading some version of the same thing. And to me, that was the biggest compliment because if, if, because what we do currently isn't very evidence-based and what most people do currently doesn't work very well. Um, and one of the, 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 the big pitfalls that we fall into is focusing too much on weight. So that is one of the big differences of our program is that it's a non-dieting program that doesn't result, uh, that, that the aim of it is not weight loss. So we have people who have lost over 50 kilos who we consider success stories. A lot of people with us lose a, like a small to a moderate amount of weight, absolute success stories. Um, we see people who maintain their weight success stories. And even uh, a couple of years ago, we had the first person who I would consider a success story who actually gained weight. So this person had been restricting for a long period of time and she got a lot healthier. Her life got a lot, of, a lot better and she ended up gaining a few kilos. So it's a, a really a program that, that is definitely for people who are very interested in their weight, but it's not a weight loss program. Oh, cool. Sammy said, absolutely love your book. And I think the transformation support community is really just a supported version of the book. 
It's, it's you know, it's I, I tried to make the book as user friendly as possible. And then it dawned on me that I was a bit naive to think the book alone could change everyone's lives. So thus the transformation support community. So a good question is, if the old program works so well, why change it? Why do anything different? And I, I guess the answer is that after running the program for six years, every year we would improve it. We would definitely do a big reflection and improve it. But based on what we were learning from our, our members and also the way that the evidence was going, the changes in the evidence, we realized that we couldn't just keep making shifts in degrees. We had to actually make a, a quantum shift. We had to start again and look at these truths that we were really understanding about how we can best help people and start from that perspective of how, what do people need in order to transform? So the three values of the transformation support community are simplicity. So your life is complicated enough. You don't need a complicated transformation process. So often, and we get some, some beautiful compliments about our, our program, about the webinars that we do in the program, and people say, I look forward to them. And I think, how cool is that? that people look forward to the webinars. And I think part of the reason is because they're fun, but a big part of the reason is because they're designed not to be overwhelming. So a lot of people uh, in our program, even you know, in, when we're doing the work of the webinars, we'll kind of go, is that all I have to do? Is that all my homework? And it's like, yeah, that's it. So it's designed to be simple. It, it's designed to be highly supported. If you're making changes to things that you might've been grappling with for years or probably even decades, you just need a lot of support. And most people, the reality is whether you're seeing a dietitian, personal trainer, psychologist, most of us have got about a week of motivation in us <laughs> before we kind of just go downhill. And, and so we need a lot of close contact support. So there's a lot of support in the transformation support community. There's also a, a lot of flexibility. Uh, so, you know, everybody is different. So we cover the same material, the same topics in a variety of ways. And we talk about in the TSC, everything being an opportunity and not an obligation. So there's a lot of flexibility for people who want to delve really deeply into things or people who just want to touch base and just check in. It's designed to work with wherever you are and work in a way that's right for you. So before we, um, we start to get to the intuitive eating and joyful movement stuff, the details of what we actually do in the TSC, it's based on live webinars that are designed just to help keep you on track and motivated. They happen every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And, and maybe you could put up a link. We've got a little time zone converter that we use so you can just see what time that is in your uh, in your area but as i said you definitely don't have to watch them live you can ask questions beforehand i send you a weekly email to to make sure we're all on track and know where we are and and that invites you to ask any questions so you can ask them in the webinars you can ask them beforehand and i'll answer them whether you're there or not because our 12-month transformation program was so successful it's a very structured, very detailed program. Uh, we include access to that entire program. So you can delve into that whenever you want to. And when our webinars relate to material in the 12 month transformation, we direct you to it. So if you want to delve a bit further, you can delve into the TMT online. It also includes access. We basically chucked all of our best stuff in there. Um, it gives you access to my complete reprogramming series audio programs. So that's a, a set of three programs that contain some pretty powerful hypnosis that people like. So that's a, a nice little addition to your um, transformation. We've got a very, very cool uh, member only Facebook community. It's a really special group because it's, um, it's, it's part of a member only community and hopefully the TSC is gonna go on forever. 
we spend a lot of time um, cultivating the group and showing the group members how to ask for help, showing the group members how to support each other. So it's not like one of those Facebook groups, it's kind of like the wild, wild west. And we have a, a guy in there um, at the moment, we've got a couple of transformation support coaches who they, they are actually in the Facebook group and they reply to everybody uh, within 24 hours and as the group grows we're actually trying to gonna hopefully reduce well, we're not gonna hopefully we are gonna reduce that time so you've got a, a bit of a psychologist there at your fingertips we are co-creating the program so um, when I did this webinar uh, three months ago asking for founding members well, I said hey guys you know do you have any thoughts and they said can we have accountability buddies so you now have the option to have accountability buddies if you'd like them. We, um, we wait a few weeks until we've got a bunch of people who want them and then we play matchmaker and that's going really, really well. We are constantly improving the program. So um, one of the things that you'll see if you join up is we just did a series of welcome videos just so once you come in, you can really get familiar with everything we're doing and just find your feet and, and make the most out of the program. So we don't have research for this program yet because it's only been going for a few months, but we asked some people if they would share their stories and the, it's been just super touching. I think that we, we had to ask people a few months ago to have faith in the program. And I'm just so thankful for the founding members for helping us create this. Um, and then we had a whole bunch of introductory members and, and really they were, you know, to, with us while we were still putting the program together. Uh, and, and we felt like we were onto something really special, but the, the, the testimonials that we've gotten from people have really just reaffirmed and validated that. Here's another one from Taryn who um, is using the TSC to support her bariatric journey. So we have maybe, maybe we haven't counted exactly, but I'd say 35, 40% of our people are somewhere along their bariatric journey. So we see a lot of those people. And there's someone who's here in the webinar, Miss Tanya. Um, so feel free to, this is good Tanya, because this lets everyone know that you're actually a real person. We asked a lot from our member stories people. We're like, we want to show your photo. We want your full name because we want people to know that you're not fake. Um, one thing that I like about Tanya's story is that it just highlights the small changes that we make. Um, it turns out that if you're feeling overwhelmed and as though you're always behind, that's not a good way to transform. So I like that, that Tanya's story highlights the small changes. And, and it's exactly the same as what we're going to be doing in this upcoming intuitive eating and joyful movement program. Just making very small changes from week to week that you kind of look back on later and go, whoa, look how far I've come. So guys, I, I have given you a whole ton of background and I'm super thankful for your patience. I think that was important. I feel like it was maybe five minutes longer, but I just couldn't figure out what to cut out. Um, so now let's get on to the actual intuitive eating and the joyful movement. And please, I do, of course, this webinar is an invitation to join our upcoming 12 uh, week program, but I do want it to be something that's practically useful. So uh, if you have any questions and maybe I can help you out on the fly or we'll have time for questions at the end, please ask them. I'm gonna have a sip of water. If you do the TSC program with us, we don't do these, um, hardly ever do we do slides. It's just all talk, um, which is a bit more relaxing, but I can't guarantee I'll talk less. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just look at what actually is intuitive eating. You've probably heard of it, uh, 
but you might not be super familiar with it. If you aren't, that's great. If you are, you'll just get another take on it. So it'll still be useful. Then we're going to switch tracks and we're going to talk for a bit about joyful movement and what that is. I'm smiling to myself because I did a webinar for another group who is, is saw value in this program on Monday and someone popped up in the chat box and said, impossible. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not, if, I'm going to tell you what it is and it, I'll tell you it's not impossible. <laughs> and then I'll let you know about the, uh, the upcoming program that we've, uh, we've got happening. So intuitive eating. Now I will use the words mindful eating and intuitive eating. I normally talk about intuitive eating these days, but I'll kind of use them interchangeably. There are some tiny research differences, but I think they're kind of negligible. So I'll talk about mindful eating or intuitive eating or a phrase I'd so um, geniusly coined mindful intuitive eating. So what is it? Put simply, the best way that I explain it is that intuitive eaters are people who eat well without trying so hard. And the research on intuitive eating actually comes from studying people who have a naturally healthy relationship with food and looking at, well, what do these people actually do? And it turns out that they do these five things in their mindsets and in their habits. So the first thing, and maybe M, you could put up a... Um, there's, this is like a little PDF that if you want to print out as a little reminder to start to get used to these ideas, start to think about them, and we'll put up uh, a little PDF that you can use as a reminder. But the first thing about them, which I think is really interesting, is that they tend to feel free to eat all foods. They don't tend to feel guilty if they eat chocolate. They don't break foods into good foods and bad foods. Um, doesn't mean that they always eat these foods, but it means that they don't feel a restriction or a deprivation. They feel as though they're allowed to. The second thing about intuitive eaters is that they tend to honor the body's natural start and stop signal. So they tend to use that internal cue of what their tummy is telling them as the sign to start and stop rather than the external cues. And so if we look down to point three, that's where we start to look at those other external cues. They don't, they're not super sensitive to those external cues. So things like uh, emotions or things like just the presence of food being there or someone offering or those type of things. So they tend to pay attention to their internal hunger and fullness cues rather than all the non-hungry cues. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that non-hungry eating, so eating when you're not hungry, doesn't mean that that's bad or wrong. In fact, you know, it's coming up to Easter time, so I think a lot of us are going to do some delicious non-hungry eating. But it is the, the cause of a lot of extra and unnecessary eating, so it is something that we may want to reduce a bit. The fourth point is, and here's where us psychologists love big words, uh, intuitive eaters tend to have body, so body, food choice congruence. Um, and what that means is they have an intuition about what foods are going to make them feel good and not so good. So a very natural, instinctive intuition that's actually built through mindfulness um, about what foods are going to make them feel uh, energized and fresh and uh, full for long, for long periods and then what foods are going to make them feel sluggish and tired and uh, maybe foggy in the head. And this is a really interesting point because intuitive eaters aren't rule-based eaters. So they would tend to eat more nutritious foods, but not because they have to, not because they're healthier, not because they're weight loss foods, but because they want to. So that's a really important difference. Intuitive eaters eat well because they want to, not because they have to. And that's why it works better in the long term because it's you, you're working with yourself rather than against yourself. And that, that fifth point is about being present. So when intuitive eaters are eating, they tend to eat. They're not um, 
distracted as much by uh, social media or TV or that type of thing. They tend to eat in a more mindful way. So does anyone, anyone have any questions or any thoughts about intuitive eating? I'll share a little bit of, um, a little bit of research on it. You can see here that, um, you know, the benefits of intuitive eating are just a nice laundry list. There's kind of nothing that doesn't get better when we become more intuitive eaters. And I'll finish off on intuitive eating, just talking, uh, just sharing one of a whole bunch of client stories on it. And I'd love you to, as you listen to this story, even if you'd like to, to you know, share anything in the chat, just let me know what you think about the story. What was your response to this story? <clears throat> This is one of our clients. I'm now listening to my body and eating when I'm hungry. Surprisingly to me, I'm enjoying finding out what makes me feel fuller for longer. It's nice not to be scared of feeling hungry when I know I can snack if I need it. I've always enjoyed sushi and it's always been something I eat when I'm dieting. I ate some the other day and realized that I was hungry about an hour after eating. So the next day I had a whole meal chicken and salad sandwich and for my body that kept me from feeling hungry for at least three hours after. It's actually fun experimenting with what works for my body and not being afraid of eating the wrong things. I'm finding that with a different thought process, I'm less hungry than before, but actually eating healthier and even less food. And I'm still looking forward to a weekend of socializing. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on that person's experience. I think for me, a couple of things kind of pop out. One thing, and this happens all the time when you do intuitive eat, eating work, it is sometimes, it, it's, um, it's a strange feeling letting go of some of the rules and learning to trust your intuition. It can be a bit scary at times, but this lady, like a lot of people, was surprised. She's like, wow, and that's a, a lot of people, when you do take that leap of faith, you do surprise yourself. Uh, Margaret says an experience and a mindset to aspire to. Yeah, totally. And I think that I really like the feel of it, which might be a funny word to, to say, but it's, it just feels relaxed. This, this person is looking forward to socializing. They're enjoying food. There's a bit of a sense of playfulness. And I think when you contrast the non-dieting or the intuitive eating approach with the dieting or the weight loss approach, it feels a whole lot different. Um, even if we research, and I won't harp on about research too much, but if we research, there are studies that research weight loss versus intuitive eating programs. And the dropout in the weight loss programs is over twice the intuitive eating programs because it's just too hard for people to, to continue. All right, let's switch tracks and we'll start to talk for a second about joyful movement. Got little bits of paper and stuff everywhere. So there's no doubt about it, right? Physical activity is really good for you. We know this. I think of it like um, a fountain of youth for the body and a bit like a magic pill for the mind. So there's, there's nothing that a psychologist can measure that doesn't get better when we move our bodies, your attention, your concentration, your memory, your learning, your mood, everything gets better. The, the brain was, uh, was designed for the body to move. So it's like, it's good for us, right? Well, I'm just gonna, actually, Andrew, I'm gonna come back to you because that's a really good little point. So, <laughs> If exercise is so good for us, why within six months, and this is actually a conservative study, this study, do over half of people drop out of their latest exercise plan? So I'm gonna need your help in the chat box here. We're gonna do a quick like little, um, 
word association. And I want you to just give me, don't censor yourself. Don't think about it too much. What pops into your mind when I say, do more exercise? Or what pops into your mind when I say, exercise? <laughs> chore. Someone privately said chore. <laughs> Janelle, too hard. <laughs> April, wasting money on a gym I don't go to. So let's just take those few responses. And what we see here is that the, the first response, the instinctive response, is not a positive one. And this is the case for most people. Most people don't have a pleasant, intuitive, instinctive association with exercise. Now, this is a, this is a huge problem. Because if you don't like exercise, you don't have a positive mental association with it, it's easy to see how it becomes the last thing on your to-do list and then the first thing when something comes up to drop off. Um, oh, and Debbie said something in the chat box that we got to get to in the, the, next, uh, the next slide for sure. So here's one way that I, I like to think about it. You think of your, no one put it in the chat box, we're, no one to say it, we're recording this, but you think of for a second of your most annoying relative. So think of your most annoying relative. And they call you and they say, hey, let's catch up in the next couple of weeks. Do you have the time? And if you make the time, how do you feel about seeing them? Now for a second, let's think about your best friend, your favorite person in the world. And they call up and they say, hey, let's catch up. Next couple of weeks. Do you have time for them? And if so, how do you feel about seeing them? So the relationship there is completely different. And this is what we're trying to do when we're building a joyful relationship with movement, not spend your willpower, you know, giving you the mental skills to like white knuckle yourself into exercise you hate forever because people are not good at doing things they hate forever. You can do it for a short term, but you can't do it for the long term. We use the precious finite resource of willpower that you have because uh, that's what it is to help you to change the relationship with exercise. And there've been some really, really lovely little comments in here from Debbie. I look forward to it because I only do things that I enjoy. Kayaking, bushwalking, cycling. Lisa, I love how it makes me feel. So we can see here that there are going to be people if we were betting money that are going to be more regular exercises than some of the other people. The cool thing is whether you want to become a more intuitive eater or whether you want to be, have a more joyful relationship with movement, these are things that you can learn. And that's what we, we're going to be doing together. So I think of um, intuitive eating like the one hand, like the, the left hand of, uh, of healthy living. And then I think of joyful movement as like the right hand. They actually work in really nicely together as well, as I'm sure you can, can appreciate. Um, and M, maybe you could please put up, this is another little reminder for people who like this idea. Um, you're already on it. Um, and so if you want to, to sort of uh, have a little PDF where you can just remind yourself, print it out and put it as a little reminder, please do. Um, so Debbie hit the first point on the head. These are, they're each five principles. Enjoyment. We're good at doing things we like doing. We don't you know, we're not good at doing things we don't like doing. The second term, efficacy. So this is um, where we, again, you know, you have to like bust out a little psychologist word. So efficacy is a term that means your specific confidence in your ability to do something. So for example, um, and efficacy is very closely linked with motivation. So for example, I... Um, I have a very high psychology efficacy. I think I'm pretty good at doing psychology. That's why I enjoy it. So I do a lot of it. I have a super low cooking dinner for eight people efficacy. 
That's why if I was made to do that, I would try and look for any excuse and I've never done it before. So we actually want to build a relationship with movement where you're actually feeling, it's not about what you can do, but it's about feeling as though you can do something most of the time. So we follow often like a 90-10 rule that 90% of the time you should be moving, when you're moving your body, you should be feeling like, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. And often that might mean doing things like starting slower um, or getting support so you can build skills in certain things. The third one is enthusiasm. So what that's about is about, you know, with exercise, it's one of those things where there's so many things we should do we should do cardiovascular exercise because it's good for our fitness. It's good for weight loss. We should do resistance training because it's good for our strength. It keeps our bones strong. We should do stretching and yoga because it's good for our posture. There's, there's a lot of shoulds. But what enthusiasm is about, is about linking the movement that you're doing with things that really matter to you. So if you want to be, you know, hiking, uh, you know, hiking the hills, it's probably going to be a lot of walking. If you want to get strong and just be fit so you can run around with the grandkids, it might be um, physiotherapy exercises and some light weight. So it's about really linking what your motivations are, not what you should do, but what your motivations are with the way that you move. Empowerment is, we use the word empowerment, it's like a positive word. But what we're really talking about here is overcoming embarrassment and guilt and shame. For, uh, for a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people who are here can appreciate this, that um, if, if you are living in a larger body, if you're feeling uncomfortable about the skin that you're in, if you're not as fit as you used to be or you're not as young as you used to be, these mental barriers can be huge barriers to moving your body. So we want to overcome those. And speaking of overcoming barriers, the, the final principle we call empathic problem solving. So what this means is that I think in the exercise space, we are very much told to just like, just do it, you know, just suck it up. Um, but when we, we're told to do that or when we tell ourselves to do that, um, it often undermines our ability to look at the problems that we're experiencing. We just try and willpower ourselves uh, through a problem, which doesn't work very well. So when we're empathic and we actually seek to understand our problem and, and have compassion for ourselves in having that problem, we often we fe it feels better because you're easier on yourself, but it actually helps you better understand the problem so you can solve it from that place of understanding. And Margaret says, yes, more walking, yoga, qigong, and cycling would be good. Helps with my mindset, which helps with intuitive eating. Absolutely both. One of the, the good side effects that happen with intuitive eating and joyful movement is that you feel better. And when you feel better, you eat better. And when you feel, when you feel better, you move better. So it becomes like a nice positive uh, upward spiral. So... Let me tell you about the program that we've got coming up where we can become one of these people who eats well without trying so hard and enjoys moving their body in a way that is right for them. So what we're going to do, and that we start on April 12th, so not long now, um, we're going to do like an intro webinar where I might again share a few slides and we'll just set the stage and make sure everyone knows exactly where we're going. And we'll give you a little bit of um, easy homework, I suppose, just to get you started. So that's the, the, the first week. Then we're going to spend five whole weeks on intuitive eating, that left hand. And we're going to go through each of those principles and we're going to cultivate a lot of those principles in the session. So in the TSC, that we do a lot of work in the session because us human beings, we ain't great at homework. So we wanna give you minimal homework. Not no homework, but minimal homework and very bang for buck homework. Then we're gonna switch tracks and we're gonna spend five weeks on cultivating that more joyful, more positive relationship with movement. And again, we're just gonna do it one principle at a time nothing too crazy and you kind of look back and go whoa i've really shifted things 
And then we actually, throughout every webinar in the program and all throughout the Facebook group, we spend a ton of time troubleshooting because we don't want to just show you an idea and have you go, oh, that's great, but then you don't know how to use it. So we would spend probably half, maybe even more than half of our time addressing the barriers and the challenges in a very optimistic, very solution focused way. But we do spend a lot of time in all of the webinars, troubleshooting, problem solving and helping you apply the stuff to you as a unique individual. But it never hurts to have that, um, that session where you can just tie it all together and wrap it up really nicely before we move on to the next topic in the program. Interestingly, this intuitive eating and joyful movement program was decided on by the group. I gave them a couple of options and this was the one. So we, we do really co-create the program together and that's really, really cool because it allows me to help you in, uh, in such a more nuanced and individual way. So we're just finishing our, our previous topic, which is the first topic we spent um, 11 weeks on what we call foundations for success. That was developing realistic, balanced, holistic goals and exploring the, the values, the, the, the powerful motivators that you have inside as to why you might have those goals and then st starting to take those steps towards success. Um, and, and, and we did this particular exercise that was really, really good in the sessions. We did it a few times, people really liked it. And I said, guys, do you wanna do any more of that? Put it in the Facebook group. And everyone's like, no, we've got it. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's nice in this group, it can be, it's, it's a bit like group therapy where we work it out together as we go. And so this program is done by becoming a member of our transformation support community. So a few details on the program. With this new intake, when we switch from the, the first topic, the, the goal setting or the goals and values to this new topic, we decided that we only wanna take 80 new members. So the TSC is a group that could, I can see it helping literally thousands of people all over the world. Um, so I will never limit the numbers in the TSC. We have a whole bunch of things that we're going to do to make it get better as it gets bigger. But I will, and I'm doing this now, I will limit the growth of it. So 80 is a, a number that we think we can grow the group by 80 and still keep the quality for each and every individual member. So we started um, sort of promoting, I suppose, the, the program on Monday and already a few people have joined up. So we've got 66 of those spots remaining. Um, and you just, the way that you save your spot is you just register. Now I think is a really good time to register because we start the program, not Monday, but the following Monday. Um, and if you start now, then you'll have some time to go through that welcome video series. Next week's webinar is a bit of a, an intermission changeover webinar where we just sort of take stock of where we are the people who've been in the program can you know figure out how they're going to switch tracks the new people can learn about the way we do things so it's a really good time to sort of if you start now to get ready for april 12 so you'll be just ready to hit the ground running um and like i said we did the call for for founding and introductory members at the start of the year. Our founding members we did last year and they kind of signed up to the program when there was no program. Our introductory members uh, still took a leaf of faith and they, they decided to, um, to, to, to be with us while we put the program together. And so we gave them like a discount for life just to thank them for helping us put the program together. But I just want to give you guys that discount too, because we, we're having fun in the program. We want to grow the program. We want you to benefit from it. So we're going to offer that to you guys as well. So it's 25% off for as long as you're a member with us. And here's how you sign up. And M will um, put up the link so you can sign up whenever you'd like. And guys, I would love you to be part of the program. When we we started it based on a bit of a dream and had to take a leap of faith. 
and our founding members and our introductory members really they had a lot of faith as well and we were creating something really really special people are absolutely loving the program um it's pretty much risk-free we have so much faith in it we have a 30-day money-back guarantee so far no one's actually taken that money-back guarantee so that's a really really good sign but you can join and it's just a sort of a a, a, a month to month no contract uh, membership so you can stay as long as you want or you know that might be a short period of time <clears throat> or there are already people in there who are like i'm going to stay for a few years and just work through all this stuff because i've got a lot of stuff to work through but it is something you can you can start and finish whenever you want so if you wanted to if you thought intuitive eating joyful movement is really important for me that's a really good one you could just do this this program for a few months and then that'd be it a um, couple of questions that people often ask, do you have to attend the webinars live? No, not at all. Um, most of our people don't, but you absolutely can. Um, and we, we, we do them for the people who are watching live and for the people who are gonna watch later, which we know is most of our people. If you miss a webinar, will you fall behind? The short answer is no. We know that life happens and we know that when you start feeling as though you're behind, uh, that's when you tend to stop and you don't get anything out of the program. So we want you to stay engaged and we often talk about taking imperfect steps forward. And because of that, we, we have a little section in the program where you can catch up on the most recent webinars or we have these natural reconnection points for if you uh, have a bit of off focus time because we know that that's life. So for example, um, for people who have already started the program and if they've lost a bit of focus, this time when we're switching topics from the goals and values to the intuitive eating and joyful movement, that's a natural reconnection point. If somebody has, you know, hopefully you'll attend most of the webinars, but if you've lost touch with some of the, the mindful eating stuff, then when we get to the joyful movement, that's going to be a natural reconnection point. So these things are, are built into the program. Oh, cool. And Janelle said, it's a wonderful program to be part of. Definitely keeps you focused on your goals. We're, we're stoked with it. And I think it's, you know, I had a lot of faith in it, but I am even surprised at how well it's helping. You know, for us to, from all over the world, being wherever we are, especially with everything that's going on in the world, and so many people are sticking with the webinars, staying in the Facebook group and achieving their goals. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and I think I've let you know about all of that stuff. So let me answer any of your questions. And I just think there were a few there in the chat box. And I'm mindful of the time. It's just a bit past 8.30, but I'm going to stick around for another... Uh, 10 minutes or so to answer any questions you have. Um, if you um, if you have any other questions, you can email me. So if you're watching this after, we know that just like the webinars in the TSE, a bunch of people are going to watch tonight and a bunch of people are going to watch later on. Uh, so if you're watching this after, please still ask a question and you can just ask that. Just email me at my email. So it's Glenn at weightmanagementpsychology.com.au and M's put that up. So let me see, let me, I'm going to pull, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to get out of this screen sharing thing because we, you know, it might be good to give you a little bit of a better feel about how we do it in the actual program. Because in the program, it's a bit like, some of the people in the program call me Mr. Brady because it's like a bit like the Brady Bunch. We're just a bunch of squares and this is how it happens. Um, and I typically, I do definitely write notes on all the things we're going to cover, but it's more of like a conversational thing. So let's, let's get a little bit of that in there. Um, so let's see. So Margaret asks, as a tapper, may I ask, how and when you incorporate EFT. So EFT or the tapping technique, this is an excellent question because the EFT was something that was the only thing that wasn't going to be included in the TSC 
Uh, but then you guys just let me know how much you wanted it. Uh, so we are making plans to include it in the TSC. And it may be, no guarantees, because we decide this is a group, but it may even be the next topic that we cover after intuitive eating and joyful movement. The guys, I know they'll get a, a choice between, I think it will be mindset for transformation where we cover seven key mindsets for long-term change, just seven week program. Or we might end up doing between six and 12 weeks on tapping. So, so it will be part of the program. And I can say that when we did the founding members webinar, I said, oh, look guys, I don't know. But then the group bullied me into it, um, so, which is great because I, now I'm really excited about it. It's a great part of, it's, it's, it's a great technique and we, we can't not share it with you. So it will be part of the program, maybe in the next topic, or if not, it'll be the one after for sure. So Karen, good question. How long do the webinars go for? They go for an hour. Typically, Karen, if I'm being really honest with you, I am between three and five minutes late routinely. So I say to the guys, like, I'm like, you guys are like my clients. My clients get me a little bit late because I've been with a previous client. So you guys get me a little bit late. Um, and then they typically go pretty much every time uh, to the whole hour. Sometimes we tell ourselves we're going to have an early mark and there's not much content, but then we get talking and they always go for an hour. So you bank on an hour. Um, oh, Angela, good question. Do we need a code for the discount? Yep. So um, I think M has shared the link for the program in the chat box. Um, and if you're watching this after, you'll have the link uh, below so you can just click on it. And in that link, there actually is the discount code. And that discount code, I'm pretty sure is transform. But yeah, you definitely have to enter that because that will give you your discount for that month and the discount forever. So definitely don't miss that bit. Oh, cool. April just signed up. Um, I'm confused if this helps you access the Facebook community or the accountability buddies. So when you sign up, it helps you access everything. And what you'll get is you'll get like a little email um, that will, it will just give you a few bits and pieces that you need and it will direct you to that welcome series of videos. So all I would do April between now and when the mindful intuitive eating um, and the the joyful movement program starts is I just work my way through those videos, which would be really easy. And one of them will ask you to join the Facebook group. One of them will ask you to do a little questionnaire that we use as a baseline. So it's the questionnaire actually includes everything that I showed you in all those research studies, the intuitive eating, the emotional eating. So we can, and what we'll do is we'll measure that at the start of your, um, your 12 week program, and then we'll measure it at the end. And you, so you'll be able to see your mindset changing. So I'll just ask you to do a few things. And then it gives you access to the webinars. So as a member of the program, you'll get a weekly email where I just kind of talk you through, here's where we're at guys. Here's some things you might want to have a read of. Here's some optional stuff. Here's when the webinar is. And so, so it'll give you access to everything. Yeah, good question, Debbie. Debbie asked, if I join now, do I have access to the foundation topics? I'd be interested in doing some of the values and goals work. The answer is absolutely 100%. So when you join the program, you have access to the live webinars and the live webinars and that, you know, that's what we typically talk about in the Facebook group. So it does have an energy and a momentum to it. So that's really good to stick with, but you can then do self-directed learning into not only the, the 12 month transformation, which is our series of online programs, not only our audio programs, but you have access to the whole library of the webinars. Right now that library is only 10 webinars, but you've got, you, we just finished our, um, our goals and values uh, topic last night. So that's all there for you. So hundred <laughs> percent. Tanya says, yep, we wanted the tapping. Yep, totally. It was a tough one because the tapping program is the program that's not my program. There's four of us and we're like partners in this tapping program. And I had to kind of go and like now we're negotiating with them to include it in the program, but it's going to be good. Just going to see if there's any other little thoughts. 
more questions? Ah, oh, and here's a nice little a little um, note from Andrea back on the intuitive eating. I've never been a person who needed to eat in the morning, but everyone told me I should do so because it was unhealthy not to do so. Once I started listening to my inner voice and started to skip breakfast, I felt better. So again, you you know, it's going to be so much easier for you. I bet, Andrew, it's been so much easier for you since you're listening to your internal wisdom. And when you do this non-dieting, intuitive eating approach, it works so much better because like I said, you start to work with yourself rather than against yourself. And that's why that's a lot less willpower, not no willpower, but a lot less willpower. And that's why it works better in the long term. Oh yeah, Andrew wants to know what time the webinar again takes place. So the webinar takes place live at 7.30 p.m. Wednesdays, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And that's actually why we did this little webinar at the same time. It's obviously a different day, it's a day later, but we thought that might give you, if you do want to attend live, or if you want to attend live sometimes, that might give you a bit of a feel for how this time kind of works for you. Uh, and M will put up, um, if you don't know where that is, M will put up again, our little time zone converter. And I think April, seeing as it is now April, it's, um, it is the same time in Victoria as it is in Queensland. So it wasn't a couple of yesterday, I think, but yeah. So guys, I think if there's no more questions, that's heaps and heaps for us. But thank you so much for your time and your interest and your energy. And as I said, I would love to support you. And either way, I hope that you've got something valuable uh, out of today. Um, and I hope you have a, a good and a safe Easter. All right, guys, you take good care. Thank you so much.